every time you press your button on the washing machine, every time you're releasing up to 700,000 microfibers, that equates to a carrier bag of plastic per household per week. Ready? Welcome to Generation Sea Change. The whole idea of Generation Sea Change is nowadays we hear so much sort of doom and gloom about environmental issues, about the sea, about the marine environment. I firmly believe there's an awful lot of great activists out there, marine conservationists, heroes, who are really helping to turn the tide. So. Generation Sea Change wants to go out and find those individuals and those communities who are doing amazing things in terms of marine conservation. The idea is to inspire and energize a new generation of people to actually get stuck in to these issues and try and turn things around. We're gonna meet incredible people. We're gonna meet amazing communities who've done great things with their local marine environment and hopefully create models that can be replicated all the way around the country. The idea is to try and inspire a new generation of ocean activists and ocean conservationists and give them the tools to carry out the work that's so desperately needed. Dartmouth, where we live, is a glorious historic old in one of the most beautiful parts of the UK, I think, South Devon. And our vessel, Sobek, is actually moored right on the River Dart. So it's our kind of base camp for exploring the coastline. There's an awful lot of history in this town. There's a very strong relationship with the sea that goes back a lot of years. But the story we're hoping to tell isn't about history. It's about the present and it's about the future. Our uh, traditional industries related to the sea are in trouble. Coastal communities are in trouble. Marine ecosystems are in trouble. So the whole uh, ethos of Generation Sea Change is to go out in our dear old catch. That's me and my family and the dog and meet conservation heroes, meet people who are doing extraordinary work. I understand you have some questions. How long have you been a marine biologist? I've been a marine biologist for 24 years, Miles. Very, very long time. But before that, I've always loved the sea. Have you always wanted a boat? Always, always. Sobek's a dream for me. This is my first yacht. So we're harnessing the power of the wind. I've got a question for you. What do you think of Sobek, honestly? Uh, I find it quite nice since it's like cabin, but um, sometimes when it's rocky and I try to sleep and I bang my head every five minutes. Um... You don't like that? <laughs> what do you think of the sea? What do you think of like plastics and all that stuff that's going on? Not nice. Not nice. Of all the animals in the sea, what's your favourite? It might be like seahorses. Seahorses. Yeah. I love seahorses. Pinky promise I'll find you a seahorse. Is there anything that you'd like to go and investigate that you feel passionately about that we can go look at this summer? Um, well, I've always been into like marine mammals and, I, and that's what I kind of want to investigate, like how much plastics marine mammals are eating or digesting or like practically inhaling mm. almost. I don't really like fish. Well, you mean don't like them to eat or you don't like them as characters, as, as I just, personalities? I just don't like them. <laughs> don't you? I'm not sure that's particularly on message for our environmental and conservation <laughs> stuff, Mills, but all right. So we started out pushing out of the river mouth, out of the river dark with the two castles that flank either side of the river mouth. And we headed off to a place called Newfoundland Cove. As soon as we got ashore, something rather wonderful happened. The girls uh, started doing a little litter sweep. They started doing a beach clean. Uh, we didn't tell them to, we didn't ask them to. I just glanced up from the, the tender from the boat and there they were. They were just heading off, picking up tiny bits of plastic throughout the beach. And it's a wonderful thing that I think there's this whole generation coming through now who are mobilized and engaged and desperate to get stuck in to cleaning up the world around them. And, and that was a really vivid example of it for me. And it, it made me proud as punch. 
During the course of exploring the cove, we made a fairly gruesome discovery, and that was the heavily decomposed body of a cetacean, of a, a porpoise or a dolphin. But it was really symbolic for us, actually, um, because it told a wider story. Right, so uh, this is either a common dolphin or a harbour porpoise, I think, because of the size. Now, the strategy that these animals, cetaceans, have always used to deal with chemicals in the sea and pollution is they store it in their blubber and they never get rid of it. They never, like, you know, get, excrete it from their body. It all stays in their blubber. And for millions of years, that's done them absolutely fine. But now, because there's so many pollutants in the sea, microplastics, microfibers, they're still storing it in their blubber and it's killing them because it's just so much pollution now. And when things like orcas are washed up in, in America, they're classified as toxic waste. They're so, they're so toxic, they're, they're classified as almost like chemicals that are washed up. So it's a big problem. This is a top predator. And do you know what bioaccumulation is? Bioaccumulation is so little bits of plastic here, loads of things eating little bits of plastic, this next layer, they eat the things that are eating the little bits of plastic, so they get all those bits of plastic, they get all those bits, they get, and then you've got right at the top, you've got things like this, porpoises and dolphins and seals that are eating fish that are just full of plastic. And these are the, the, the guys that catch it up, basically. These are the guys that really struggle with it. So the next stage of the journey was moving up the river Dart and finding an anchorage there that for me is one of the most beautiful anchorages in the world. But as we were heading up the river, uh, we saw the most extraordinary sight, and that was a grey seal, a large grey seal, eating a, a thornback ray. So it was real sort of apex predatory action right in front of us. Uh, so tell me about your thoughts, things you see about marine plastics. Well, I'll start with like that. It's a good place to start. Yeah. Great place to start. Yeah. Like, microplastics measure less than five millimeters across. The filters on all our sewage systems are seven millimeters wide. That means all the microfibers and microplastics go through those filters straight into the rivers and straight into the sea. Well, then that needs to be changed. It does need to be changed. It's one of many things that needs to be changed. Many so. things that need to be changed. Okay, right, come on. What, what are the facts? Um, scientists have found microplastics in like all corners of the globe. They've been found mm. on the top of Mount Everest and in the bottom of the Mariana Trench. That is true. So they are literally, yeah, literally everywhere. Everywhere in our ecosystem. So here's, here's yeah, a fact for you. If you eat seafood, you'll ingest about 11,000 pieces of microplastic yeah. every year. Especially mussels yeah. and oysters. Things that filter. Yeah. 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 Um, mussels. That's my nickname at university. Why? Oh, <laughs> no, it wasn't actually. I had another nickname, which I'm not going to share with you. So, so go on. Go on. Um, 45% of marine mammals, 21% of seabirds, and all seven species of sea turtles um, are affected by microplastics and ghost nets. So you've been reading up on this, haven't you? Yeah. You've been learning about it. And um, th so those are the facts, Arla. Yeah. There's... How does it make you feel? I mean, I suppose by similar to what Molly said. Like, kind of almost disappointed in the human race that these like beautiful things have been here and we've just come along and practically destroyed them. My last question for you on this is, um, what do you want to do about it? Just raise awareness about it because I feel like that's the most important thing. If we can really get the word out and tell people about what's happening here. I think um, it's raising awareness about it, but showing people what they can do yeah. about it. And I want to take you and the family to meet an amazing person turning it around. We'd started off with the, the microplastics and the accumulation in the food chain and 
Well, and now there was an opportunity to go and visit the location where Dave and his team were actually creating these extraordinary devices that were stopping so many of these microplastics getting into the marine environment. So Dave, can you describe the essence of the problem of microplastics? That's a massive question regarding a massive issue. But if you could sort of summarize it, what would you say is the essence of the problem? Okay, so we would have heard about macro plastic in the ocean, all the big stuff that you get to see floating around. Not many people realize, but that is becoming micro plastic every single day that goes by. And 35% of microplastic pollution that's in our oceans is coming from the textiles that we wash, the clothing that we wash uh, in our washing machine. That's extraordinary. So, uh, over a third yeah. is from washing machines and clothing. Absolutely. That, that's causing harmful effects, not only for our food chain and our wildlife, but also for the lungs of the earth. Because people don't realize that 50% of the world's oxygen comes from the ocean. So that's every other breath that we take. What about more kind of direct impacts in terms of marine life and indeed ourselves? Yeah, so um, when we use the washing machine, uh, the microfibers are being released from your clothing. They're going straight into the rivers through the water treatment works. They're finding their way into the oceans. And then what's happening from that point is our filter feeders are absorbing them, are eating them because they think the fiber is a, is a bit of the food, right? Mm. Um, and unfortunately, these fibers are coated in toxins and chemicals, and they're finding their way directly into the food chain through that route. But then also the knock-on impact is it's not just the zooplankton, which is the tiny little microscopic animals, but it's also the phytoplankton, which are the tiny little plants that live on the upper surfaces of the ocean. And the soup that we're creating by using our washing machines is covering up the phytoplankton. The stats are for every household, they're releasing a carrier bag worth of microplastic into the ocean a week. You're precisely the sort of conservation hero we, we want to meet, Dave, really, and hear the story of, because you've come up with a solution, haven't you? You and your team have come up with a solution. Can you just describe that solution? Yeah, so uh, we started in 2017. We're the Clean the Seas group, and um, we've come up with a retrofit microfiber filter that's designed to fit on any front-loading washing machine around the world. Now, retrofit means you can fit it after you've bought the machine. Correct. So you get your waste pipe from your washing machine, and you plug it on the back of the, of the unit, uh, and then you, we provide a pipe that goes from the unit straight into the waste. So all your waste water is now passing through the filter, and the filter is doing what a shellfish is doing in the ocean and the sea. It's filtering out your microplastics. And the important thing is here, it's capturing them at source down to one micron. And so stopping these microfibers at one micron means we're stopping the water cycle, the plastic cycle. We're stopping it from raining microfibers. We're stopping the microfibers from getting straight into the seas. The whole company, everyone involved in the company has a connection to the ocean. And whether that be a surfer, paddleboarder, a wild swimmer, um, and that's been absolutely fascinating to bring that cohort of people together who really, really care. And they're prepared to put in the extra mile because they believe in the cause of keeping the ocean free of microfibers. So that's it. You know, that's the end of our first story and uh, extraordinary to meet Dave, extraordinary to see what he's doing and extraordinary to walk away with a real spring in our step thinking, wow, it's so great. There's people like him that are actually making a difference out there. That's the end of our first film, but there's many, many more to come. We've got at least 30 more films we're going to create over the next few months and over the next couple of years, each one that will address a challenge that the marine environment is facing and we'll meet a hero or we'll meet a community that's facing that challenge and making a real difference. So do join us if you can and uh, together we can tell the story of Generation Sea Change. Thank you.